This video documents the process of replacing the two batteries in a Tektronix Model 212 oscilloscope. I googled the batteries for this scope and found them on OSI Batteries website. Here's the URL and here's the uh, page that they have listing for the 212. This battery pack is actually usable in many different pieces of equipment and the way OSI Battery sets up their website, they may show the same battery many times, each time with a different title on it, depending on which pieces of equipment the batteries could be used in. Here is one of the two batteries I received from OSI Batteries. You can see the part number or model number of the battery there, as well as um, the rest of the label, its specifications and they give you a generous solder tab on both the positive and negative ends to make your connections in whichever way they need to be made for a particular piece of equipment. The batteries do not come with the cable or uh, connector plugs because those would be different for each piece of equipment. The scope comes apart with only four screws. In this picture at the far left, right at the bezel for the CRT, are two screws that go through the neck strap hanger uh, fittings. Those get removed and then you can also see two more screws in the leftmost uh, slot where you can roll up the uh, oscilloscope probes for storage. You can just make out the two screw heads there down inside the slot. Those screws are all you need to take apart to get this scope into two halves. With the four screws removed, the case bottom lifts off, as you can see here, and this is what the scope looks like, uh, bottom end facing up, with the bottom uh, half of the case removed. The bottom of the scope circuit board assembly, which is at the top of this photo, is the deflection circuit board, and uh, it plugs into the adjacent board, which is on the left of this photo, with two pin plugs, one at one corner of the board and one at the other corner of the board. With those, you have to lift the board up a little bit so it undocks from the two battery packs, which have pins that go up into holes in the board. So you lift the board up a little bit to undock from the battery packs and then wiggle it loose um, to uh, disconnect those two pin connectors. And then the uh, deflection board can swing up in this direction as seen in this photo to get it out of the way. Each of the two battery packs has an end cap on each end. Uh, they show up as uh, white plastic uh, parts on this photo and each of those has a couple of little uh, pins on it which engage with holes in the circuit boards top and bottom and that's what holds them in place. They are not held in with screws or anything else. Accordingly, the battery packs can simply be lifted out of the assembly, uh, secured only by their uh, short wire leads. The leads terminate in three pin plugs, and I believe this is done so that it doesn't matter which way you plug them in. The uh, negative is in the middle pin, and then there are two positive pins, which just wire to the same positive terminal of the battery, so the plugs go in either way. This view just shows the uh, spaces that the battery packs normally occupy on either side of the narrow portion of the CRT. Here are a couple of photos of the power supply board which is underneath the CRT uh, or actually since these pictures show the scope upside down they're on top of the CRT in, in normal orientation. Here is one of the two original battery packs with the end caps removed and the tape which held everything together also removed. Other than one wrap of fiber tape around the battery packs to secure the end caps, they're only held on with uh, strips of what is essentially like foam weather stripping or a double-sided uh, foam tape. The black and red wires are just removed from the original battery terminals by warming with a soldering iron and then uh, re-soldering them to the new tabs on the new battery pack by the same method. Here is one of the new battery packs with electrical tape put around the ends of the pack to cover up the electrical connections. And here is a view of the same battery pack 
with two wraps of electrical tape to hold the caps in place. Ideally, this should be some sort of a fiber tape or a packing tape. I didn't have any on hand, so I just used the, the electrical tape. It should do the trick. And here are both of the new battery packs ready to be inserted back into the scope. Each battery pack's plug was plugged back onto the circuit board, and as I mentioned before, it doesn't matter which way they get plugged in as long as they don't go off to the side, so the middle pin still needs to go to the middle pin on the plug, but otherwise the orientation is not important. And then once the uh, plugs are in place, the battery packs can be set down into their positions with the little uh, bumps on their uh, end caps engaging the holes in the circuit boards. To make sure nothing was dislodged or any plugs unplugged in the process, the scope was powered up in this situation to make sure that everything was still working before uh, reassembly was commenced. By far the worst part of the process of replacing these batteries was getting the scope back together again. Um, it wasn't so hard to get the case parts aligned and slid over all the aligning tabs and so on. The, the hardest part was getting the two scope probe cables and the power cable snaked through their tortuous routes, uh, which essentially amount to strain reliefs for those cables. Uh, it was very difficult to, <laughs> to finesse them back into position, and you can't have the case wide apart to do this. You need to have the case partially reassembled and then through the small gap between top and bottom case halves. Uh, it's necessary to kind of probe in there with a screwdriver and kind of finesse the cables back into their positions before the case can be really closed up. And after I'd done that, but before I put the screws in, uh, I powered the scope on one more time to make sure everything was still working. And then once everything was reassembled, the scope was powered up one more time and put through its paces to make sure that it was 100%. And uh, this photo does show the scope running off of its new batteries. Hope you found this interesting.